Welcome to F-Bomb History. on F-Bomb History. Super dangerous army to be in is a peacetime, small war it's army. It's not, I don't give a shit what you did in the war. What have you done for me lately? All right, the war is over, which celebrate. Yay. Bartender. <laughs> oh, you made me spill. She's my daughter. Just a touch there, sweetheart. Just a, there we go. The war's over! What about Custer? Okay, so the war's over, right? And Custer gets sent to the long place. Busted. To, well, he doesn't get busted. Well, he's, well, he's a lieutenant colonel. But well, he gets sent down to, of all places, Texas. Texas. Right. All right so he gets sent to Texas, and freaking. You know, I mean, that. believe me, the Texans down there that are in the, the cab that he takes over, they ain't impressed. Yeah. So he comes with his Eastern highfalutin West Point ways. Goldilocks. Yeah, with his long flowing locks and the whole nine yards. Like, Earrings, nasal cords. Who is this clown? You know, right. They can't stand his lobby. He ends up. They take him over to. They take him up to Austin where they're doing the. They're doing the whole reconstruction occupation thing, and they finally muster these guys out of service. It was so bad though yeah. because he was trying to hold on to discipline so hard. Yeah. <clears throat> They planned on ambushing his ass when he was leaving. Yep. Somehow Custer's like, hey, you don't want to go that way, dude. Somebody told him. This, but he got told that they were laying an ambush and they were going to kill him. But <clears throat> he was such a mark net and they couldn't stand his ass. Then he gets posted to the 7th Cav. All right. He gets posted to the 7th Cav. He's out at Fort Riley. I love it. Fort Riley, Kansas. Freaking all of you that have been stationed in Fort Riley. What a fucking hole that place is. The world Holy is round. Shit. But it really is flat. It's a really cool place because it's literally the one of the only army posts out there that started life as a fob. Yeah. It was basically a fob. Nothing flat. 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 flat sucks. Flat. I hate that place. Anyway. Miles and Miles. He ends up in Fort Riley, Kansas. He goes out and he ends up sending his boys on this like road march. And while they're doing this, <clears throat> freaking Custer jumps on a train to link up with his newly married, his newly, new, newlywed wife, Libby, and decides, I'm going to go see the old lady. Get a shot ass. Gets busted. Uh, and gets bring afternoon on, delight. And gets brought up on charges for uh, being a wall. Uh, now let's imagine uh, a lieutenant colonel. Afternoon delight. A lieutenant colonel getting brought up on AWOL charges. Yes. What the fuck is that all about? No well, shit. Wait, he was a general before. Now he's AWOL. Right. Now he's AWOL. Yeah. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And then, this, then all the political shit just starts freaking stacking up. Yes. All right. Then he takes the boys out to get the Indians back on the reservation. And they go to a place called Washita. Yeah. Well... All right, here's the deal with the Washita River. First off, Custer is known as this big bad Indian fighter. And you gotta realize he was only in two Indian fights. And Ever. one, he almost got his ass handed to him. The second time, he did get his ass handed to him. Now, Washita River is basically in Oklahoma today. And here's what happened was the, well first off, you know Sherman's little adage about the only good Indian is a dead Indian. And so Sherman is Sherman's not a, a guy who would probably fit into any type of <sighs> of thinking of how to rebuild a country. He's, well, you got to think about this. Is yeah. The guys that are the guys that are take that are now tasked with uh, expanding the West. These are the same officers 
that reduced the South to yeah. ashes. What they did to the South, they did to the Indians, but people just don't think it was the same, but what? Except no. on an industrial Sherman scale. burning down the entire South, burning down Atlanta, he did the same tactic against the Indians because he thought that's going to work. This is how you do it. Now, he has to eradicate the Indians and eliminate them. Now, the Indians, the Cheyenne, made a treaty. They decided they didn't want to be part of this. They're done. They don't want to be part of this fight because they realize trying to fight all them gringos are going to get their ass handed to them. So they back off and they create... Oh, no, they, that's what I call okay. All right. Uh, now, check it out. They backed off and they... Uh, a guy named Black Kettle put 50 lodges spread out over about oh, a 15 mile radius. Now, he spread created out. his own reservation south of the river, the Arkansas, so that he would basically not be messed by the military. He made a deal with the military. Look, I'm here. I'm peaceful. We're not bad Indians. We're the good Indians. Leave us alone. Now, the Cheyennes, to get this, they made a deal with the government, but part of their deal was they told the government, we should be allowed to go up and hunt in our ancestral lands where there are buffalo. Now, here's a little rider. This is the key. The government said, you can hunt there as long as there's buffalo there. And if you know anything about history, there was a whole period of time to basically kill every buffalo. Kill all the buffalo. Yeah. All of them. There were buffalo train bill. loads yeah. of cub buffalo hunters going out and slaughtering them by the thousands a day. And this wasn't for me. This was hard. If you could do this, then the Indians would no longer be able to go into those lands, and those lands would become part of the white people's territory. They move into this, basically they create their own reservation, the peaceful Indians. Now, they are there, they can't come out, but some of the Indians are pissed off the fact that the, the, the American government screwed them over. They can't hunt them. buffalo. No. Yeah, you know, no, we should have no shot. Mainly the young guy. The young guys are like, fuck this noise, we're gonna go fight motherfuckers. I'm stunned! Now, they weren't gonna fight motherfuckers, they're gonna fight basically the people who are like them who are working with the whites. And what we're talking about is the Pawnees. And the Pawnees are, oh, what are those motherfuckers in France who, uh, you know, worked with the Nazis? What are those called? Oh, it's basically uh, collaborators. Uh, collaborators. Collaborators. All right. So basically, the Pawnees are like the collaborators of the Indian world. Collaborator. Yeah. Collaborator. There we go. Now, the, Ch 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 the Cheyenne decide, we're going to go up, we're going to take a war party of 200 guys and take out Pawnees because they're the ones snitching on us and fucking with us. However, as they move along, they find a bunch of angry white people in the way, <laughs> and they end up killing them instead. Oops. Oop. All right. Oh, my bad. And he said they're going, now, why don't he write? Now, when they come back, a guy named Black Kettle and a guy named Little Rock, the same place that Little Rock, Arkansas is named after. Pretty much. Little Rock, Arkansas is named after, it's not named after a Little Rock, it's named after this guy. So, basically, Little Rock and Black Kettle decide to go to the fort in the nearest fort where there is a general and try to tell them those 200 guys were trying to kill Pawnees and not trying to kill white people. It's not, not it. us. Not us. Okay. Not now they get up there and the colonel's name is Hazen. Now Hazen is up there. They talk to him. They plead with him. They tell him it's not us and we want to move our camp and we're going to go Just even gonna go further away. south. Just leave us alone. We're but wait, fine. Not only that, but they also told him there was a representative from Texas there, a guy who was a traitor. And he said, dude, we're not going to fuck with Texas. They're trying to tell everybody, we're peaceful, we're not going to fuck with anybody. We're trying to stay out of this fight. Now, Hazen looks at him and Hazen basically says, nope, you guys are evil Indians because Sherman says so. Sherman said, Cheyennes are bad Indians. Therefore, no deal. You're probably going to get your ass handed to you and just fucking deal with it. All right, so now they come back. Because all little brown guys are all little rock. That's right. right. That's because because little brown guys. Little brown guys, because right. nobody knows. Jesus Christ. Now they right. come. They have to get back to their camp. They come back. Lord. And they come back to their camp. There's a driving fucking rainstorm. In fact, Haley, how bad was the weather? Thanks, Pat. Sheridan had chosen a winter campaign because the Native Americans would be less mobile during the winter months. They would not be raiding regularly and would not be able to flee as easily. A winter campaign would have the element of surprise. 
The Native Americans would be caught off guard in their permanent camps, and the strength of the Native Americans' horses would be greatly reduced. The weather didn't swing completely in Sheridan's favor, though. The days leading up to the Washita River Massacre had the American troops running into severe weather conditions. Sheridan said that on November 15th, nearly two weeks before the massacre, a blizzard hit them as they set out on their journey down the river and carried away their tents. The snowstorm proved to be a challenge for Custer and his Native American guides. The storm covered the landscape and covered the prominent features used to navigate. The next day, the storm had stopped and the weather was clear and cold. Heavy snowfall covered all the trails, but wind blew away enough to keep the troops moving. On the morning of November 27, 1868, the Native American camp saw a foot of fresh snow and bitter cold temperatures. This has been Haley with WFBH. Back to you guys. Thank you! Alright, thank you. That was Haley. awesome, Haley. Great report. Alright, now they get back to the Washita River, and they have this massive conference of all the chiefs there. And the chiefs are like, they're worried because they know the whites are going to show up with their army and they're going to wipe them out. Why? Because they're the only Indians they can find. They can't <laughs> go after an Indians they can't find, but they can go after the ones on the reservation because they know where they are. They know where they're at. Yeah, no shit. Right? Too easy, right? Now, Lying in fruit. they decide they're going to leave the next day. Here's what they don't know. As soon as they left the fort, Word went out from that commander, and he told Custer and his 7th Cavalry, go get those Indians. So, the next morning, these Indians were going to go. In fact, the day is November 27th. November 27th, the Indians were going to pack up, leave, and go. Well, the November 26th, Custer surrounds the village on three sides. Now, the Indians find out about this, because they're Indians, man. They're not stupid. They know what's happening. And they try to get things going fast. But they also don't believe that the white cavalry is going to wipe them out because they're the peaceful Indians. We so already they, talked to your boss, man. Yeah. It's fine. And they, right? they, they don't believe this is going to happen, so they're not quite... They're not 100% sure it's going to happen. Now, what Custer did is Custer comes right in. And when Custer and his men come charging in, initially the Indians... Well, I take it back. One Indian fired a gun in the air. And he's warning all the other Indians, shit's warning. happening. It's a warning shot. Yeah. Look out. But because that one shot was fired, it's kind of like the Boston Massacre. Uh, hey, there's a shot. Let's all kill it. It's going to start everything. Yeah. Uh, so they come in and they start killing everybody. Now, here's the deal with the Washita River. Custer doesn't hold his men back. They kill. Not at all. Everybody. Bugs. Now, dogs. Uh, well, mainly women and children. Women, children, uh, horses. This is a quote from uh, one of the scouts. His name was Ben Clark. He said the regiment galloped through the teepees, firing indiscriminately, killing women and children alike. A group of women and children were shouting at them, and they were killing them without mercy. Another one was all the warriors who laid on the ground, you know, the ones who were wounded, and after they rode through the first time, they came back, got off the horse, and shot them in the head. They killed women, they killed men, they killed children, they killed everybody. Because, like Sherman said, the only good Indian is a dead Indian, and they took that policy to heart. Custer, straight up, another, this is another great example of the douchebaggery of this clown that becomes this great freaking American hero. We'll get to that reason here in a second. We're, get, we're getting to why he becomes this great American hero. What a douchebag! What a fucking ass clown this guy is! Yeah, and even, and even the word douchebag is too tame, because... We're talking about dark part of American history, and you got to teach all of American history, the dark parts and the light parts. It's freaking heinous. And, and we're talking, this is evil. This is pure evil, and there's there's no way to sugarcoat that. The fact that you're going to wipe out women and children because you can, and that's it's too easy. And here's the deal. If you don't curb your men, you're a leader, you're an officer, and you don't curb your men from doing that, all of a sudden they will do it because they know you're not going to punish them. And, you, and next thing you know, you got the SS... Goose stepping across the Ukraine, it's killing Russians. It's that's exactly how it happens. Becomes a norm. Yeah. It becomes a norm, and everybody's used to doing that's just how we do it. That's how we do things. That's how you do it, right? All right. Now, Custer's in the camp, and he realizes, guess what? If you start gutting down people's women and children, they tend to get angry at you. These are warriors. These are not fucking mellow men. Now, these guys, even though they're in the reservation, they're peaceful, they realize we have to fight back. And so what happens is the Indians start fighting back. And actually, it's long-range sniping, but they slowly are moving around surrounding Custer and his men. Now, Custer 
realize is the only way that you're going to get the Indians to wipe him out, because he's now getting surrounded and he's outnumbered, is if they track him down with the horses. What does Custer do? Takes all the horses. He kills the fucking horses. He doesn't take them. He kills them. He, he, killed, he killed a lot of them, but he took like... Yeah, about eight hundred of them for like prisoners and shit. Yeah, well, he took, he killed uh, like about two hundred horses. In other words, he just murdered them, uh, killed them dead. Killed now you got women, children, and horses. Kill them all. Now, so now you can't move because you're in the plains. That's you know, right. It's November in the winter time. And, yeah. So now, as he does this, though, the Indians <laughs> surround him even more to the point that he is now backed up into a corner with his men. This is almost like Custer's last stand again. He is surrounded by the Indians, fire him, and the only thing that saves his ass this time is dark. Three it, times now, yeah, if you yeah, count no him, shit. three times he's done this. So it becomes dark, and he's able to get away, <laughs> but if it wasn't for that, he wouldn't have been able to get away. But So what he has successfully done was he wasn't able to find any hostile Indians, he found peaceful Indians sitting in a reservation, he attacked them even though they didn't want to fight, and they didn't put up a fight in the beginning, so he's able to kill their women and children, and then he almost gets his ass handed to him. One what a time. fucking great leader. What a fucking douchebag. No kidding. While this is going on, a young officer is uh, a guy lieutenant. Named, you know, Joel Elliott. He's a lieutenant. Right? Um, and, and actually, he's a major. Is he? Even no. He's still young, though. Yeah. Now, check it out. He decides, all right, I'm going to get some glory. In fact, his exact quote was, for a brevet or a coffin. What a dick. Now, what that means is I'm going to do this for a promotion or I'm going to die trying. Now, he also Pretty takes much. 20 guys with him. He decides they're going to break out and try to get out of there and do something for a diversion to draw the Indians off. Kind of a forlorn hope thing, but he just made it up and did it on his own. And what he did was he ended up getting every single one of them slaughtered. Now, Custer, being the, the awesome leader he is... Fucking douchebag. He, when he decides to leave and get out of there uh, under the cover of darkness, he doesn't even send anybody back to look after Elliot and figure out what's going on. Never shall I, never Leave a fallen I, comrade. Leave a fallen comrade. I read that somewhere. In, in, in today's military, if you look at Black, uh, Black Hawk Down, the entire battle of Black Hawk Down was the entire military might at that location trying to get back one guy. Yeah, you know, Durant, days. Michael Durant. So we won't leave anybody yeah. behind, but Custer, he'll leave you behind that in a fucking heartbeat if he thinks it's going to you know, hurt him. Just like he did with the guys that he slaughtered in the, in, uh, the two battles in the uh, Civil War. Hey, I got out the colors, but all my guys, half of my guys are dead, but I got, I the, colors. I got my colors. Look at me, I'm, I'm a black. fucking Woo! showboat. I'm a fucking douchebag. Cut. So he leaves Elliot. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, wait, no, Sorry. no, no, no. <laughs> Oh, the, the backside of that is guess who's Elliot's best friend is? Oh, yeah. Because this is going to mean something later. Yeah, it is. Because his best friend is this guy named Captain Benteen. 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 Ooh. Ah. Oh. Spoiler alert. Next time on F Bomb History. There's gold in them there hills! Oh, shit. There's gold in them shitty hills. Fuck! Came home last night all full of lush And my babe began to fuss and I said, honey, honey I don't care what the people are thinking I'm not drunk, I'm just drinking I said, I'm up, another round I said, I'm up, another round I said, I'm up, another round One more